How's it going everybody? It's Salty Trico and we are back with another YouTube video I think after about a month. Uh, don't worry, I'm still making Pokemon videos so make sure to smash like and subscribe. I've just been working on other projects and I also have like a real job now. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, unfortunately I can't play YouTuber on text forms anymore. Not like I, I read a fill out a text form. But anyway, today we're talking about King Gambit uh, because it's being suspect tested in OU which honestly I'm shocked that it's taken this long to think about suspect testing King Gambit, because King Gambit's really always been one of the big pillars of Gen 9 OU. Um, I'm just gonna put on some replays in the back just so you can be watching something while I'm talking. This first replay is very interesting, and I honestly should not have won this game because I played like shit. And we're gonna get to that because I feel like that's one of the reasons why King, King Gambit might be over the edge, because you can really play like shit, and then King Gambit just comes back and just, just kind of wins the game. But anyway, King Gambit is definitely one of the best mods in the metagame. It has been for a while. I think right now it's number two in usage by a pretty hefty amount. Um, a good margin. Um, I'm pretty sure he's also the number two most used uh, Pokemon in Worlds. And it is, if I remember the statistic correctly, it's the number one most terrestrialized Pokemon in Worlds. So let's just give a quick overview of King Gambit. So uh, while you're watching along, you can start formulating your own opinion if you're not too familiar. Um, spoiler alert, I don't have too much of an opinion. I'm gonna give my opinion at the end, but it, it's very lenient. I'm very on the fence about this one. Normal, and that's strange, because normally with suspect tests, like, I don't even bother laddering. Like, I might ladder for this one, because it's actually gonna be tight and your opinion might actually matter. So definitely, if you have an opinion on King Gambit, definitely get your racks and do the suspect test, because I feel like everyone's vote is really gonna matter on this one. Um, and everyone's vote, you know, it always matters, no matter what. But, especially this time. But normally, I don't even bother getting my rocks for suspect lettering, because I feel like, except for except for Gen 8 Melmetal, I feel like I've been able to accurately predict every single um, outcome of every single suspect test. Because, at least for me, it feels like normally there's some sort of more, I don't want to say obvious, but more popular, more able to lean to more uh, a better choice a better choice i don't know why it took me that long to think of the word better apologies for that um but king gambit is i feel like it's the epitome of everything that generation 9 pokemon is um it's very offensive it's very forgiving and it is in my opinion is by far the best abuser of terrestrialization in ou if not the entire game of pokemon scarlet and violet right now because okay so, let's talk about King Gambit, just so we can get a little more of a concise thing going on here about it. That was a nice crit, by the way. Um, King Gambit is a very offensive Pokemon, just in nature, which is strange, because if you look at its stats, I feel like it would lend to more balanced teams, which it does. This Pokemon fits on pretty much every single team. I've seen it on stall teams, and I've seen it actually work on stall teams, which is insane. You, never, you usually don't see a Pokemon that fits, like, so perfectly on every single team style, but King Gambit seriously kind of doesn't. Obviously, it's less common on Stull, and it's more common on more offensive teams, although when you think about it, Scarlet and Violet, even even like balanced teams tend to be more offensive um, in this generation. The, there's just a strong um, strong lean towards offense this generation, mostly due to terrestrialization. So King Gambit, because its ability is absolutely just freaking ridiculous, it, this, it, it's like, I'd say it's like a top 5 ability in the game right now. Like. Definitely, like, below Magic Guard, but, like, above Adaptability, that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, like, above Magnipole, that sort of stuff. Yeah, fuck you, Magazine. Who the, who the hell runs Stash Magnazone? This person is not real. I, I refuse to believe it. But, King Gambit, usually, I think one of the reasons it's so stupid is because of its ability. You can play really stupidly, like I did in this game. I played, like, shit in this game that I'm showing you right now. Um, but I still managed to win just because King Gambit was there to just, like, eat the opponent alive in the back, which, you know, it, it happens. But, obviously, well, well, in most Pokemon generations before this, although I've only played 7 and 8 competitively, um, when you sack Amon, it feels like shit. You feel like you just lost that guy forever. But, like, when you sack Amon, you're like, oh, okay, well, King Gambit's strong now, so even, in, even though I lost this Mon, my Mon in the back really... Just got stronger and because of this you really don't see king gambit come out in the mid game too much and in the games it does come out in the mid game like 
the person who does that is like severely disadvantaged because they don't have a healthy King Gambit in the back. And as a result of this, just from what I've noticed, King Gambit tends to only come out when it's like the second to last or the last Pokemon on the field. Like, like in the very end game is when it comes out. And there's a reason for that. You come out and all your uh, all your moves are 150 base power <laughs> and, and you're bulky as hell. You have Sucker Punch for priority. And now we're going to talk about Terra. So th I think the biggest thing with King Gambit is that it's so good at abusing Terra that it's frightening. If there is a reason that you'd want to be like ban King Gambit, well, the first one would be Supreme Overlord because it's a ridiculous ability and it favors sacking Mons and boosts Hyper Offense a lot and makes it extremely forgiving. King Gambit is such an extremely forgiving Pokemon. Especially, like, in this game too, you're gonna notice, I play like shit in this game, which I play like shit all the time because I'm not good at the game, but especially in this game, I play pretty damn bad. Like, right here, letting Slowking get down to this low health is really bad because now I can't use Chilly Reception, but I'm gonna win this game because of King Gambit anyway, so it doesn't matter. But, King Gambit's main, it has pretty much three main Terras, like, I think the most common is Terra Flying, and then second most common is Terra Fairy, and then third most common is Terra Dark, although you don't see Terra Dark too much, and you don't see Terra Fire anymore uh, too much now, um, because th there's just not much, you're not too afraid of burns. Um, but the, the two problem ones are basically Terra uh, Flying and Terra Fairy, because it means that at the end of the game, you can basically completely flip all your counters completely on their head. And you're going to definitely notice this in the last replay I show, um, which is the next replay. I only have three. We'll actually see if that uh, matches up with how long I'm going to talk. I don't have too much more to talk about, I think. But, like, let's think about think about King Gambit's um, biggest counters. Number one, Great Tusk. You run Terra Flying. It can't hit you with its um, with its fighting or ground moves anymore. Most of the time, um, uh, Tusks don't generally run close combat anymore. They mostly just run EQ. However, like right here, I Terra Fairy and I just automatically won the game. Because if if I didn't have Terra here, I, I straight up lost this game. Like, I can't beat Walking Wake and I can't beat Tusk. So, I just instant lose the game. Probably. Well, I probably... who knows. But because I can Terra Fairy, like, what's the Tusk gonna do to me at the end of the game? Like, what? what, what? What's it gonna... it's gonna Earthquake me? It's gonna Earthquake me and do 10 damage? Like, yeah. Yeah, no, like, that ain't happening. So I, I get to SD up, and from that point, the game is won, because I just Oko pretty much every other mod in the game. And I, I personally feel like, if I had to choose one of the two, I feel like Terra Flying is probably better, but I feel like Terra Fairy is extremely close. Because the reason I like Terra Fairy better is because you absolutely just beat, you beat every great Tusk set. If you run Terra Flying, you still have the potential to lose to, or at least be more disadvantaged to Great Tusks that run Ice Spinner, and especially if it has Head Smash, you're getting absolutely destroyed by ones that have Head Smash. The thing is with Terra Fairy is that, especially if it's a defensive Tusk, it, it just can't do anything to you. Like, its Earthquake is going to do 20 maximum, and you just get to SD up, and if you're Terra Blast Terra Fairy, like... <laughs> you just smoke them. You smoke the shit out of them. And even if you're low kick, like I I'm low kick in this game, I, I just win. I just win at the end of the game. So, so I feel like Terra is really the biggest reason why King Gambit is so bad. Or, it's so bad for the metagame, if you consider it bad for the metagame. But, you know, as I'm talking more, I used to be very on the fence, but as I'm talking more, like, I'm trying to think, what are the upsides to having King Gambit in the metagame? I'm, I'm trying to, I'm genuinely trying to think right now, like, what's, what makes King Gambit good? So without, the, the, the two best like counters to King Gambit are Tusk and Valiant, which by the way, there are three fighting types in this game and I still win with King Gambit, so what does that tell you? Like what Pokemon? So what happens if, um, King Gambit leaves the metagame. Tusk probably goes down a little bit. Valiant probably goes down a little bit. S um, I don't know. I, I feel like, now that I'm talking about it more, I feel like there aren't, like, many downsides to having Gambit leave the metagame. 
Yeah, now that I think of, although that that is one. Um, Galarian Slow King does become a lot better. Like Glow King definitely shoots up in usage. Um, what other? There aren't too many other like psychics in it here, right? Am I stupid? I'm. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna open good old showdown right now. I'm gonna open good old showdown, and we're gonna we're gonna look in the OU tier. All right, we're gonna have a little look sees. So what does it beat? Or yeah, what 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 beats King Gambit? Cinderace. But Cinderace, I mean, Cinderace is just a core change horror, right? It doesn't do anything really except core change and will was. But if, it, if you get something other than that, like, that's good for you. I feel like Dragonite would definitely increase in usage again if Gambit goes down. Because Gambit is so good. And having D-Knight in the back, like, D-Knight is basically Terra Normal, E-Speed, the Mon. And having the Seal type just always be in the back to wall it um, is definitely bad. So I feel like D-Knight would go up in use. Dragapult definitely goes up in use. Because Dragapult's completely helpless against Gambit. Um, Golden Go beats Terra Fairy, so Golden Go isn't completely... I feel like Golden Go doesn't matter too, too much. Um, Hat. Hat definitely goes up. Um, I feel like that's pretty much it. Zama maybe goes down a little bit. But I feel like that's pretty much it. And... I feel like Gambit is really just kind of making the metagame very centralized right now. Because every team really kind of, it has to have a tusk. Every team really has to have a tusk. And Valiant is also, I think, the number three right now. And then Gambit's the number two. And don't get me wrong, having a centralized meta isn't a bad thing. And sometimes it can even be a good thing. Like, here, here's another example of how Terra is just kind of stupid on it. Because he makes the really good play of Ice Spinnering into my Gambit, because I'm obviously going to Terra. Although, he was expecting me to be Terra Flying, and because I was Terra Fairy, I just won. And the game was kind of over from that point. Um, yeah, crap, because Tusk isn't as necessary, because Tusk really does, in theory... In theory, Tusk beats Gambit, and even, like, from the replays I've showed you, that's obviously not inherently true. Valiant beats Gambit, but it, but it Terra's. Terra is just the biggest thing. If Gambit couldn't Terra, it would not be too big of an issue. But the thing is, as long as you have your King, King Gambit in the back, and you save your Terra, just the mind games, like, you, you don't even need to mind game. Like, this is insane, because it's a Sucker Punch Pokemon that doesn't need to mind game. Because it's so ridiculously bulky... And so damn strong, once it gets like, uh, like, three to five, um, fallen, that it doesn't even need to get reads right with Sucker. You could just click buttons, and you could just win. I, I feel, at least. That, that, that's just how I feel. If you have a different opinion, uh, make sure to say so in the comments. But, I'm not gonna lie, before I was thinking about it for this video, or before I started recording this video, I was leaning, like, 60-40 on the side of ban for King Gambit. But now that I'm thinking about it more... I'm leaning more like 70, 30 towards banning. Another issue I have with King Gambit is it makes the it makes the game very linear because if you have a Gambit on your team, basically your win con is always going to be Gambit. So the game basically comes down to when when you're um when you're playing offense with Gambit is just weaken the opponent's counters to Gambit and then you bring in Gambit and you try to win the game. At the end, when you lose your mods. And, norm like, that sounds like I'm oversimplifying it, but that's kind of, like, all it is. Like, th there's really not too much more to that. And it, it's not like that in other generations. It definitely wasn't like that in Gen 8, and I know it wasn't like that in Gen 7, even though that was quite a while ago. So, I, I now that I'm talking about it more, I'm feeling like I'm leaning more towards Ban on King Gambit. And I'm not sure if I have too much more to say, so I'm kind of just going to end the video here. Yeah, I, I think that's my final thoughts. So in, in this video, we have come to the conclusion that I think that King Gambit is probably better off being banned. And let me know your opinions takes, uh, down in the comments, because I might have forgotten something. If you think I forgot something and I see your comment, I'm like, damn, that's a good point. I might pin it or something. So make sure to do that. Also, ba ba ba, like, smash, subscribe, boom, join channel member, $3 a month, give me your money, please, I'm broke, and have a good one, you guys.